my mom's best friend, you know, my whole life. I think he met me when I was about three weeks old. So he's known me literally my whole life. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, I just called him Uncle Dan. Um, you know, my mom and him dated before I was ever born, but then they just became best friends. And um, he became kind of this surrogate father figure to me, even, you know, just, just, he'd go to my gymnastics meets, he'd go to my school things, you know, he just showed up in the way that a normal father would, even though we never lived together or anything. And um, eventually, over the years, he became Uncle Daddy Dan. And uh, <laughs> so that's, that's still what I call him, is Uncle Daddy Dan. And, um, you know, the reason it's a good segue, it, it relates to the bear back here. Um, he's actually the very first train engineer on the Global Peace Train. He's, um, and, it, and there's a very kind of auspicious and beautiful story around how that came to be. So let's, let's use that as a transition. Um, why don't you now tell us, and Brian will probably put some slides on for you, about the Global Peace Train, kind of what led you to it maybe, and you just started to give that story, what it, what it is, what it's doing, and then hopefully that will prompt some other questions that I'll have and maybe our audience will have. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, the Global Peace Train is something that, you know, I like to think of it from so many different angles because there's so much wisdom packed into one small image of this train. And you can even trace it back over the years through music and all of these people singing about this peace train, you know, Cat Stevens, the peace train's coming. Or, you know, there's another beautiful song from, I think, the 50s or, or 60s called People Get Ready, you know, there's a train coming. And, um, you know, really, the essence of that is, yeah, like, let's bring peace into the world. And whatever that looks like, of course, in the outer way of, you know, dealing with extreme suffering in war zones and the things that are going on, you know, in our world on the massive scale. And then on a more close to home scale, just within our own communities, you know, within our family structures. And then, of course, close in is like bringing peace to ourselves and what that looks like, peace of mind, um, you know, and to be able to share that with others. Um, you know, and of course, the word love is always overused a little bit in the New Age world. But yeah, it's it's the train is just a representation of bringing love into the world and what that looks like. So, um, you know, there's some very kind of real things that the Global Peace Train does. So you can imagine it like a real train, and each train car has a different community that it serves. Either, um, like we have one up on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, we've had other projects um, in Kenya, in the slums there, or down in Argentina in the slums down there. So, um, you know, it either represents a community, one train car will focus on, like, Lakota people, or it'll focus on an issue that people have, like homelessness, which is also a community. It's a global community. There are homeless people all over the world. Um, so it's either a topic or a community. 